Hi, my name is Dr. Rudraman, and through the Oral Health Channel, today we're going to be talking about alveoloplasty. Let's start. So today I'm going to be talking about a surgical procedure known as alveoloplasty. This is a pre-prosthetic procedure usually required when we are doing some sort of prosthesis that is a, a denture or a partial denture in patients. It is usually done by either immediate extraction or after a delayed uh, extraction operation once the swelling goes down and the extraction socket heals. Now alveoloplasty as the word suggests if you break it down into two parts alveolo means alveolus that is bone and plasty means that is the shaving off of or thinning off of or reducing the alveolus or the alveolar bone. Now sometimes you have in the especially in the lower jaw you have a lot of bony spicules. This is more present in elderly people who have lost their teeth over a long time and have gone residual rigid resorption. Also you have to understand that these prominent bony spicules can hamper the insertion and as well as the stability of the denture and the prosthesis and can cause rocking of the denture. Secondly, there are a group of muscles which are the floor of the mouth and you have a mylohyoid muscle that causes the rocking of the denture or the dislodge, uh, dislodging action of the denture because of its contractual action. So alveoloplasty is also uh, combined with the shaving off of some of the fibers and this has no consequence on any sort of quality of life or masticatory process of the patient. Now alveoloplasty was initially started off as a surgical procedure which is done under local anesthesia by hand instruments such as rongers, bone files, osteotomes but nowadays we are also using surgical uh, and uh, rotary hand pieces as well as piezoelectric devices because of the fact that they produce better and smoother surfaces with lesser uh, post-operative discomfort patients as well as some sort of avoiding any sort of neuro uh, you know neurological uh, or any sort of functional sequelae that the patient might face as complications. The procedure is very simple. We identify by digital palpation of the area where we find the either if there's a torus or tori or any sort of uh, bony spicule or protuberance. Under local anesthesia we, we palpate it and then we give crestal incisions and releasing incisions and open up a flap. Nowadays we make sure that the labial cortical plate or labial cortical bone that is the one on the outside of your jaw is preserved and we try to go from the lingual side. On top of that, we then obviously after the anesthesia, we identify it with digital palpation and then we give either the cuts or the sort of with the help of rongers, we cut the spicules or we smoothen them out with the help of hand pieces and piezoelectric devices and then again we suture them up. Now there's something that you need to understand, this is a proper surgical procedure so it has to be done under adequate anesthesia. If you're a patient watching this, you need to really understand that why it's being done so it's obviously important for you to ask your dentist why it's being done and I would request you to get it done with the help of an oral surgeon because of the fact this is a very technique sensitive procedure and it has a lot of vital structures like nerves near it when we are raising the flap so this has to be done very meticulously in very in a very cautious and a precarious manner so that not to uh, you know uh, injure any sort of neurovascular bundle or cause any sort of complications. The healing time is obviously it is accompanied with you know antibiotics and uh, analgesics and anti-inflammatory medications. You are given some, some specific set of instructions by your doctor. At the same time, you are supposed to expect the healing time to be around 7 to 15 days. If we are giving resorbable uh, sutures, then it's fine. It takes about 45 days for the sutures or the stitches to uh, dissolve. Otherwise, if we are giving normal silk sutures, it is very simple that within 10 to 15 days, we can get the suture removal and then you can go ahead with your prosthetic treatment. So this was today's episode. Please like, share, subscribe and do press the bell icon button for important updates. If you want to get in touch with me, here are my social media handles. Kindly refrain from calling me directly as I might be busy with patients or otherwise. And just leave me a message on WhatsApp stating your name, your location and what is the common oral health problem that is giving you discomfort or pain. If you have any queries, doubts, insights or suggestions in uh, and around the content that I make around oral health, please make sure that you put them in the YouTube comment section. So that's it for today. Thank you. <music>